TCI Tarina project is focused on improving Indian food systems. As you know, much of Indian agriculture policy was focused on staple grains, increasing rice and increasing wheat, and that was important for reducing the problem of hunger. But to address the broader problem of malnutrition, the problem of hidden hunger, as we call it, then we need to look at a broader set of food groups that are available, accessible, and affordable to the poor in India, especially vegetables, and livestock products, dairy products, etc. And what we are trying to do is look at ways in which we can enhance overall availability and affordability of that food system diversity. That's the focus of our work. So the idea of Tarina is to diversify food systems. One of, one of the primary goals of Tarina is to increase the diversity of agricultural systems. And one of the ways that we can do this is by changing people's behaviors so that they desire a more diverse diet and have more information about the importance of eating a diverse diet. And then hopefully the agricultural systems will see this demand and respond by increasing the amount of diversity in crops that are produced. People are eating a very limited diet, um, a lot of rice and carbohydrates, a lot of potatoes. And while there are some instances of people eating vegetables as a whole, they're eating a very monotonous diet. And so this is indicative of micronutrient deficiencies. And one of the ways to combat micronutrient deficiencies is to increase the diversity of a diet. So eating more fruits, more vegetables, more meat and animal products as well. So what sets this project apart from other projects is that unlike looking only at agriculture or only at nutrition, we look at the whole link from production to value chains to markets all the way to consumption behavior and what's driving the kind of food that people eat, which then influences their nutritional outcomes. We're looking at women's empowerment as a specific input in this project. Um, we're looking at women's labor-saving technology because women spend a lot of time in agriculture and that takes time away from child use, from household chores. So if we can um, reduce that drudgery in the field, then you, know, you would expect that some of that time would go towards maybe better food preparation practices, better childcare practices. Um, and then together with that, there's also the role of markets. A lot of what farmers are producing and growing and selling uh, is dependent on prices and sometimes the market is there and sometimes the market just doesn't exist. So they don't have a choice. So we're trying to look at all those different aspects of the food system. It's a great pleasure to have you all with us this evening. Uh, welcome to the launch of Tarina and the inaugural policy seminar. My name is Prabhu Pingali. I'm a professor of applied economics at Cornell University. And I'm also the founding director of the Tata Cornell Institute for Agriculture and Nutrition. And it's been an honor and a privilege for me to direct the Tata Cornell program at Cornell. And it's been an even greater pleasure to start up this new grant from the Gates Foundation on Tarina. And for those of you who don't know what Tarina stands for, it's Technical Assistance and Research for Indian Nutrition and Agriculture. So that's Tarina. It was a really catchy name. We first got the name and then decided to write the proposal around <laughs> this. Um, before we start on the panel, I thought it would be uh, useful to spend a little bit of time talking about Tarina itself. So the focus of Tarina is on promoting improved and more diverse food systems. So we're very much focused on looking at nutrition from a food systems point of view. So why, why food systems? I think it's really important for us to, to understand that while India as a country has, had has made enormous progress on hunger reduction and, and made that progress primarily through investments in staple crops, rice and wheat, and to some extent with maize. And the, the Green Revolution success that came out of that led to a big drop in hunger. And we're all 
privileged from having seen that drop take place, and we've all been direct beneficiaries of that. But despite that, malnutrition continues to be very high in this country. And malnutrition con continues to be high even where the overall quantity of food is not a constraint. And so we've now moved from a discussion on adequate quantities of food supply to looking at better quality of food and better diversity of food. And the problem of micronutrient malnutrition, the problem of hidden hunger, is a clear manifestation of that lack of availability and affordability of diversity and access to micronutrient-rich food. And so what, what we are trying to do in Tarina is to address that problem, to look at ways in which we can enhance the overall availability of high quality, high diversity food, uh, and, and address the food systems for making that sustainably available. And that's the challenge, I think, for India as a whole, and it's something that uh, we hope we can make a big start on from this project. So what Tarina is doing is looking at this problem across the entire value chain. Uh, we're looking at ways in which you can enhance the quality um, and diversity of food, looking all the way from the farm to the consumer's plate. So we're looking at ways in which you can address input systems, safer input systems, looking at ways in which nutrients from the soils translate into nutrients in the food, to looking at inputs used in agriculture, particularly inputs that are used by women and women labor, and, and trying to look at ways in which you can reduce the trade-off women face between drudgery in the farm to the time that they have for uh, taking care of children, taking care of themselves, and improving their own health and their own nutrition. And looking at ways in which farmers can look at enhancing their own productivity, not just for staple crops, but looking at ways in which they can enhance the productivity of a diverse set of crops and livestock activities. Then looking at ways in which smallholders can connect up to the value chain, ways in which you can have smallholder farmers integrated into value chains for horticulture products, dairy products, livestock products, etc. Ways in which we can address post-harvest problems, uh, especially improving quality of post-harvest products and the safety, safety issues. Mycotoxins are a particular problem here, aflatoxin issues, and how do you reduce some of those post-harvest losses due to diseases and infestations, etc. So these are some of the areas in which we're trying to build up better capacity along the value chain for better quality food. But we also realize that increasing supply is one part of the equation. We realize that addressing improved nutrition also requires behavior change. Behavior change in rural areas, and behavior change even among middle-class urban consumers. And looking at ways in which one can talk about improved behavior, uh, improved demand for diversity is a crucial part of what needs to be done in order to address the problem of micronutrient malnutrition in India. So these, that's the broad focus of, of what Tarina hopes to do. So, Tarina itself has three primary pillars to it. The first pillar is very much on the ground action research and action-oriented uh, 
project implementation where we are looking at agriculture projects and looking at ways in which we can enhance the agriculture projects which are primarily stable crop oriented to look at ways in which you can improve diversity at the farm level, uh, reduce women's um, drudgery, improve women's empowerment, and connect farmers to value chains at the project level. And we're looking then in the second pillar of the policy environment at the national level and at the state level. Policies that are still very much focused on Green Revolution era uh, staple grain enhancement policies and looking at ways in which you can create a more neutral policy environment that then provides incentives for farmers to diversify their production systems. And the third pillar around enhancing capacity uh, of the civil society organization, the NGO groups, younger professionals that are coming into the cadres, the development cadre, to look at ways in which this community also has the capacity to, to, to look at food systems through a nutrition lens and look at ways in which one can promote a more diversified production system and a more diversified food supply system. And in that third pillar, we're also setting up a center of excellence in Delhi, which we hope over the years will become the go-to place for new knowledge, new methods, and data, etc. cetera, uh, that takes a food systems perspective and mainstreams food systems perspective into development projects. So this is a, a major effort that we've started on, and, but we're really excited about it. Now let's talk about the panel. So we thought one of the ways in which we can start this whole process was to, to get to start talking about diversification of production systems and talk about what are some of the constraints we face today in moving from a staple crop oriented production system to a more diversified production system. And we've been very fortunate to have a very strong panel um, that has spent a lot of time thinking about these issues, several decades in some cases thinking about these issues. And we've been delighted that they've accepted our invitation to come together. So, uh, all of you have the agenda, and let me go through and introduce each person, and then we can I'd invite them to, to make a few remarks. I've already mentioned Purvi Mehta, the Deputy Director and Head of Agriculture for South Asia. But Purvi, in her previous life, was the head of the International Livestock Research Center of the South Asia office based in Delhi, and a very strong expert on livestock issues. I'm sure her remarks will draw on some of that expertise also. Suresh Pal, who is member of the Commission for Agriculture Costs and Prices, but also, are we allowed to announce that? You're yeah. going, going to be the, in, the new director, I'm going to announce it, <laughs> the new director of NCAP. So apparently that's still in the works, but congratulations on that appointment. Um, Shobha Shetty, the, the regional head for agriculture and rural development, the sector manager in, for South Asia, based in the office here in Delhi. And of course, Ashok Gulati, who doesn't need a lot of introduction. Ashok uh, used to be the former head of CSCP, the former director of IFPRI South Asia, and so many other positions, and you and he's always in the news, so Ashok, we're happy to have you here. And Pika Joshi, the head of the South Asia office of IFPRI. Delighted to have this panel. We're going to go through and have each panelist spend a few minutes giving their perspective, and then we'll have an open dialogue across the panels, okay? <laughs> 